reasons. So first that's the talking about for the scoliosis, you want to observe the curvature of the spine. So in general though, make sure you're looking at the cervical lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, and then going to lumbar lordosis. Those are make sure they kind of see that. Even for this patient, a little bit there's a flattening on the thoracic region. So that's something that I need to kind of note it in myself. But then looking into the curvature for the spine itself to the more on the lateral um, view aspect of it. So if there any going to the curve, convexity to the right or left. If you do find some convex convexity, so for example, if there's a, this patient has a little convexity to the right, right on the possibility in the like T8, T9 area right here, and then you will, what you'll do is you'll ask the patient to bend forward. And this is for that Adams test. If the curve, whenever there is a curve to it, there's also the quite a bit of the um, external, uh, quite a bit of rotation. And you will look at the rotation, and if the rotation component is getting better, then it's more functional. Means that tension in the muscles or imbalance on the pelvis. If the curve, the convexity, and also the hump is not getting better, then that's possibly more congenital. Um, problems. Next test is a spinal percussion. You can do it in a seated or you can be standing. I usually like to first use my the fingers to go down. If anything, I can also use the like a reflex hammer to kind of do it gently bring it down. And if there's any infections, any fractures or anything, the patient will usually note it. Uh, there will be a pain. Next test I want to do, okay, let's bring the table this way, and then actually have the patient lay hip this way, lay on your back. Next test will be um, sternal, sternal compression. So sternal compression will be you will actually apply some uh, pressure right on the sternum. If there is a fracture in the sternum, also when you do this sternal uh, compression you're also checking for the sternal clavicle joint if you press it down sometimes if there's a dislocation of sternal clavicle joint there will be a movement sometimes you can actually grab the clavicle and then try to move the um, clavicle to checking for the sternal clavicle joint itself but in sternal complexion you can just do this if sometimes have possibly um, con, uh, chondritis then you, you want to cause the chondritis, you can actually palpate the area of the cartilage right here, right along the rib, and then patient will usually note the pain. Um, next test will be a, a beaver sign. Beaver sign is check, checking for possible herniated disc on the thoracic region. You ask the patient to bring the hands on the back of your neck, uh, both hands, and then basically doing a sit-up. So ask the patient to do the sit-up, and if the navel goes up, okay, usually the navel doesn't move, but if it goes up, then lower thoracic, there will be a lesion. So if it goes up, it could be a T10, T, uh, T11, 10, 11, 12, that's possibility because those are the innovation to the lower abdominal external, uh, obliques. But if it goes down and do the, another sit up, and then if it goes down, the navel goes down, then it's a little bit more higher up, so T like 8, 9, 10, those are the um, like a hernia disc lesion, and you can kind of see, so make sure to kind of observe the navel as they go do the sit up. Uh, next test we want to do is the supplements, you know, go to sit up, face towards that way, the wall. And the supplements is actually checking for the intercostal neuritis, um, or the sometimes you're checking for the inside on the thoracic case, which means the pleura. So what you do is first ask the patient to raise the arm up all the way. If they can't even do this, it could be a shoulder problem or it could be the tension on the thoracic cage. If the pain is on the right side, if the patient will go bend it to the right and the pain increase right on the intercostal, that could be an intercostal neuritis because you're actually putting more stress on the intercostal area. If it, but also, it can happen is that you will bend on the opposite side, and if there's a neuritis, it could be in the intercostal area, it could be a pain too. However, when you do this, and if there's a pain that it's a little bit more broad, and they can't really do this because on the deeper pain, 
then it could be more on the pleura. So you need to really ask, where is the location of the pain? Is it right on the intercostal? Is it a more like diffuse and it's a little bit deeper? Then that's going to be the pleura. Okay. Uh, next test is the chest expansion. Just to bring the tape measure. And then a lot of times you want to kind of measure it. I usually write, measure it in like right on the nipple line. And then you can kind of go up or down making sure that depends on the, uh, be consistent with the, whenever you measure it. So right now it's uh, 93 centimeters. Ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it. And that's like 96. So there's a three centimeter increase, and that's a good breath out, and that's a normal. If the person is a male and a female, it's a little bit different, but it's really restricted. It doesn't move like more than one centimeter. Both in both cases, that's a positive. Um, I think it's uh, for the male. I forgot it. I think it's about maybe two centimeters for the female. At least they move the one centimeter. So I want you to make sure to look at the notes and to kind of confirm that the like how much does it move. And I think that's for the thoracic region.